And somebody told me, they're just like, hey, did you know this person made a diss track to you? And I'm no. just like, what the fuck? I'm just like, I'm just like, what the fuck? Who made a diss track to me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not doing shit. All right, all right. Bro, you hear me good? Everything's good? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> all right. We're recording. All right. Welcome, guys, to One on One with Galaxy Boy. I got to find a better name, but that's that's what that's what we're rolling with right now. Everybody's digging it, though, bro. Everybody's digging it. So Hell yeah. Bro, Hell yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. So here we got a very talented artist, a very intelligent person, you know, I could say so many good things, but let's let's get down with the shits. He's from he's from Toppenish, Washington, and we've had a we've stayed in contact through Snapchat, and you know I ended up uh, swiping up on one of your stories and and contacting you, and and we ended up you know kind of clicking a little bit, you know kind of you know just just kind of talking about stuff, and then same vision, yeah, same vision, and then I ended up having Creos over for one of the podcasts, and you actually know Creos. And we'll yeah. get into we'll get we'll get we'll get into that we'll get into that. And you actually know Creos, and and then we ended up having a whole conversation about oh man, uh, you know I would love to have you on here, you know, just just you know just to talk to you and get. I'm trying to get as many artists as I can just to showcase people. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and then I, I you released an album. I don't know if you released it before or after we talked, but I ended up checking it out, and it's actually pretty fucking good. Like, thank you man appreciate yeah. that shit bro yeah no, so a lot yeah no um so i skimmed i skimmed through it the first time i didn't really you know like just went because it's a whole album and so i'm like you know let me go look for the, the cuts i like and yeah. then and then today i was seeing with it and i'm like holy shit there's some good cuts in here i'm like um yeah uh, no i just i'll just i'll just say what i like about it you know like the, the storytelling aspect of it is awesome like it has a lot of vibey tracks, like um, which one? Uh, Don't miss. I think that one was yeah. pretty vibey with, big, with the one we recorded in Big Town Studio. That yeah, one. man. Yeah, that yeah that album was pretty cool, man. It turned out fuck, man. The album it took me. I started working on that album in like 2017. Um, the whole perspective of that album really changed though within that year once I I really like made the the final decision to really roll with that album and the whole concept of like the cover art the title of it like it's 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 all everything that i wanted to do and i came up with that since 2017 so that's just something that the idea that i knew for sure i wanted to make and how i wanted to represent top niche because at that time i was really at my peak of doing things like good with music and um like man a lot of things just went down a lot of things went downhill with a lot of like personal personal shit and um yeah 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 hold on hold on because i want you to tell the whole story you know just just what you can tell but just like start from the very beginning when this album was very conceived. Like when you were like, like let's let's start in the way. All beginning. right, so wait, 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 let's start in the way beginning. It's, it's, it, we're, we're jumping way too ahead. All right, so, let's let's start. So, let's, let's, let's start so, simple. Let's start simple. Let's start simple. Like how do you get into right. music? How do you get into music? Okay, so um, man, I knew I was really into music since like the third grade. I I just love hearing music, and not only that, like music kind of like not exactly ran in my family through like generations and stuff like that, that I know of exactly. But uh, it all started off with my uncle. My uncle started making music and he was actually making music with, uh, with M status, you know, with, uh, oh, no with way. Swap, he's a mill records, all those dudes, you know, they, they all knew each other. Cause you know, they're all from that same generation. And then uh, my older brother, actually, my older brother started getting into music and he got into music with my cousin. So they were always making music and everything. And um, my brother was also very talented with music, but his main thing that he was really, really good with was sports. And um, me, I got into sports really late. My brother was into sports since since he was a young and you know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like uh, me, I wasn't into sports. Uh, I was more like a, at school, I was more of like a quiet kid. You know, I had, I had friends, you know, that I, that I remember uh, to this day and everything, but um, I was a very quiet kid. And um, on top of that, uh, I was like, I experienced, you know, bullying a little bit uh, from this one kid. And uh, it's funny because now, you know, now that we're older and everything, we actually grew out of that. And we, were, we were able to squash all that. And he's actually, you know, a really good friend of mine. More mature. He a lot of, yeah, he showed a lot of love, respect. And like to this day, 
you know, he'll apologize for, for you know, the shit like that. He'll be like, bro, like, <laughs> I'm so sorry for the things I did do, you know, the things I've said and things like that. And it's because, you know, he was a, he was a very popular athletic person. And, um, you know, me, I tried getting into sports, but, you know, I wouldn't, I would get rejected a lot, you know, what I mean? uh, you know, because I was a chubby kid. Um, so I always knew I liked music, but I never found out that I, I really wanted to do music until like seventh grade came. And what I would do, and which I kind of figured it out, was because I knew that I would always write lyrics like of other rappers that were from third grade to up to like seventh grade of rappers that I was, you know, I was favoriting and stuff like that, you know, like Eminem, Chris Brown, stuff like that. And around that time, that's when Drake really started coming out too, because, you know, uh, he started going on tour with Lil Wayne and things like that. Lil Wayne was really bringing him out. And um, that's when he came out with like So Far Gone tape, the Thank Me Later, you know? Love so him. like, I was really put on that. And my, bro my older brother is the one who put me on that. And my older brother, uh, I knew I fell in love with music once I heard uh, Kanye West 808 Heartbreak album. That, that album like changed my life. And I was like, bro, like I really, really love music. I really Classic. love music. And so like, I knew the whole thing of how, how artists created music, you know, it, it was a paper, you had a pen, you would write, you know what I mean? That's all I knew, you know? Mm -hmm. And what I would do with all these other artists that I was hearing, I would write their lyrics and um, I would, you know, be rapping them like they're mine, but I wouldn't be showing them to people or anything, you know? But, you know, by the time I really decided to find out, like, you know, I want to write my own music, I was able to, like, develop that style and rapping it consistently, rapping it, knowing it word for word and the flow and everything like that. I was I was able to kind of, like, develop all these different styles of these different rappers I grew up listening to all into one. And eventually from there, it started progressing and building into my own sound. And a lot of people, you know, you know, say, like, you know, your sound is different. It's really different. But, you know, it really isn't different. It is It is impacted from a lot of different artists, you know what I mean? And But it's all created just into one. So by the time seven, you know, all those years came by, um, I seventh grade hit and I started getting into more into music and wanting to write my own bars. So I started writing and then um, I wasn't showing nobody, but um, but like I was showing them the lyrics, you know what I mean? Like I wasn't showing rapping, I was showing the lyrics, you know, yeah. to like, you know, friends that I trusted and stuff like that. And they're like, yo, like these are good, you know, you know, you should really do something with it. And then I've always considered it, but I was just too scared at, at, at that point. I was just like, nah, you know what I mean? It's just like mm. uh, yeah. growing up, growing up in top and it's just like, yo, like you're only, you're only known for like sports, you know, athletic and, and pretty much uh, academics, you know, you're either smart, you know, you're going to all these good colleges and doing these good things, or, you know, you're growing up an athlete and you're doing something with that. So me, I wasn't athletic and I wasn't really into sports, um, you know, around that time, but I got into sports, you know, once like middle school hit, you know, and I don't know, like, I didn't like it because, you know, my older brother, he was like, he was a starting quarterback, you know, he was a starting pitcher, you know, um, so you got that made, shadow. Made, yeah, made, he made varsity for almost everything he did. He was just athletically gifted. And I just hated the comparison, you know, all, all the coaches saying like, you know, like, you know, seeing how different I was from my brother. And I just hated being compared, you know, going to school, be walking in and you would see a teacher and be like, man, like, you know, I'm disappointed. You're not a quarterback like your brother was and stuff like that. It's like, Damn. yo, like, like, it's just like, you know, that's my brother. It, it ain't me. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I, I really didn't like that. And I was like, fuck, you know, like I knew music was like something I could do, but I never really fully considered until like the support started gaining more and more and more. And I saw where it could be. Um, so I was like, you know what, like, fuck it, you know, I'm gonna do music, and I'm. Well, I'm gonna what made out. you? What made you really push towards it? Was what was what was that one thing? You're like, you know, was it just like small things gradually building, and you're like, all right, maybe I should take it serious, or what happened? Well, me, bro. So it's like, I wasn't smart in school at all. School is like not for me, and like to this day, you know, like my family, my mom, and they'll tell me like, why don't you go back to school? Why don't you go back to school? And, you know, I tell them, like, you know, like, if I were to go back, go back to school and go to college, I would want to go for something that would help me in music, you know? And then, of course, you know, like, my mom hits me with, like, you know, you, know, you got to think more, you know, realistic <laughs> and things like that. And I'm just like, no, I was like, you know, I was like, you know, hear me out. You know, I want to go for something that, can, if I'm going to go back to school, I want to go for something that's going to help me within music and with my backup plan. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, but I feel like, you know, it'll probably be really hard to to explain them and and tell them you know like about you know 
what I see with the music thing, where it, what it could really do. And that's yeah. why I, that's another reason why I work so hard at, at trying to like make something out of it is because it's just like, I really want to show my family, like, you know, like, Hey, you know, like I told you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you like, know, like there I, is I, something I here. Really do that. You know, my mom, you know, she always hits me with that, you know, you know, there's a one in a million, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And I know she doesn't mean it to put me down and stuff like that, but it's just like, she's, she's, she's speaking know, reality. She cares, you know, she cares. She just doesn't, you know, my mom's scared of me failing. I know it's just my mom is simply just scared of me failing. And I understand that. And I, you know, I'm always going to have love for her for that. But, you know, it's just like, it's hard to really, to really explain to them how it feels for my position. Because at the end of the day, like, I'm the one who feels what I feel. And I'm the only one who, who knows what I feel, but I just don't know how to explain it, you know? Yeah. So, so that's a, that's a, that's a big reason, bro. That's another big reason. On top of that, it's, you know, my daughter as well, but you know, that's more down later. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. Down the road. We'll get so, there. So, uh, but, um, so, but no, you started, you, uh, back to uh, how you yeah. got into it though, but uh, you yeah, know, you, you, you start doing it. You start taking it more serious. I was writing lyrics. I was writing lyrics. And at that time I knew they were, they were corny, corny little rap, mm-hmm. wag lyrics, but to me, I looked at like, you know, these are, you know, the way people told me that I showed, they're like, you know, they're good, you know, for, for somebody who barely starting you know and i was just like okay you know for sure you know i I, it built me a little bit of confidence so i just kept writing kept writing and then eighth grade came and um they started doing karaoke's in the cafeteria during lunches Mm. so they would do uh you know like seventh grade lunch you know eighth grade lunch sixth grade lunch they would switch it up every year and shit like that um but when i when i was in high school it was like by order i believe Mm. um so they were started doing hosting cafeteria um, karaoke during lunch. And, you know, one of my friends that I've been showing my lyrics for a while, he was just like, bro, he's like, you should go up there and you should, you know, show everybody your lyrics. You should rap your lyrics. That's and it. I was like, damn. I was like, man. <laughs> I was like, like, for some reason, like, as soon as he told me that, like, I knew I, I knew I was down, but I was very nervous. You know what I mean? But I don't know, for some reason, like, the nervousness just went away and like as soon as i had the mic and i saw all the eyes were on me like mm-hmm. it just went away bro and I, I just felt comfortable you know and i just i just did it and so i started out by doing it by over you know over drake beats you know and stuff like that not like tight beats or anything but like beats that were already made like i was i did some beats off of like uh drake's nothing was the same like i was just remixing shit pretty much at that point and um people were just like hey, you know, you're really good. Everybody started coming up to me after that first time. And everybody like, you know, you're really good. You're really good. You should you should keep going up there more and stuff like that. And then I was just like, you know, thank you. And the more the karaoke started coming around, the so, more. So, you, it, so every, so you, you would do karaoke every lunch or. or, or what? So, so, so like, you know, every, it started off, you know, everybody was like, yo, you're good and everything, you, should, you know, you're good, you know um pretty much just giving me props and then the more that they started doing because they had just started doing the karaoke at that time they just wanted to try that out and um so the more they started doing the karaoke it became more kind of like an automatic expectation where people wanted me to to go up there every time and people would ask me like it would be it would be days before days before the karaoke would even roll around and people would always be asking me hey are you gonna rap are you gonna perform you know what i'm saying like that that's sick yeah so um How'd that feel when they were telling you that? I was just like, damn, I was like, this is really cool. Um, but as soon as that started happening, like, you know, the kind of, the hate almost started happening. The hate was only coming from one person. Oh. And, um, and every, it's like everybody else, like, was, like, supportive of it. Like, the whole, class, like, entire middle school, bro, all of, like, the 8th, 7th, and 6th grade, you know? Hey, bro, I'll, hey, get bro, more, hey, bro. I'll get more to hey, that. Hey, yo, yo, isn't it crazy how fucking, <laughs> like, ev- like, you can have so many people saying that you're good, but that one person who says they don't like it shines the most out of all, but everything. Ch- so check this shit out. Um, so, you know, everybody was like, you know, you're good and everything. You should keep doing it. And there's, like, this one person. And... We're totally cool now. Like, it, it trusts yeah, me. Yeah, like, the, yeah go ahead, watch, go ahead. Um, we link up again later on in the story. Um, but so eighth grade, uh, he's talk. he's like, I don't know, I don't know where, like, he, I guess he was into music and he was able, like, to buy himself studio equipment. Around that time, I didn't have studio equipment, nothing. So, like, the way I was getting my followers, the way I was getting my clout is simply just by performing. And people started finding out about it everywhere. It, it, it just started becoming word of mouth. So from like, so from when I started doing the karaoke, 
um, I was in class one day, and then um, they were they were hosting karaoke that day, and I was in my my class before lunch, and somebody told me they're just like, hey, did you know this person made a diss track to you? And I'm no. just like, what the fuck? I'm just like, I'm just like, what the fuck? Who made a diss track to me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not doing shit. And so they told me who I was, and I I knew who the person was or whatever, um, because he was in my grade. Um, mm. And so I heard it, and I was just like, man, I was like, what the fuck? Was it pretty I thought, decent? <laughs> I, was just like, I was just like, man, I was like, that's, that's crazy, because I was just like, fuck. I was thinking, like, okay, like, he just, he just put out a diss track to me. How the fuck am I going to respond? You know what I'm saying? Like, I have no studio equipment, like, at all. You know what I mean? No way of recording. So I'm just like, fuck it. So I'm like, I wrote a, I wrote a quick diss track rap, like, probably like 20 15 minutes before class ended mm -hmm. and i just fucking just by rereading it going over it within that amount of time like i just it just stuck to my head bro and i'm just like okay he did it he did it to a remix off of a drake beat and his his favorite artist was drake like he was a really big drake fan i'm like all right so i'm gonna do it off that same beat that he dissed me to so lunch came i went on stage uh. and i put that beat on and i and i i wrapped it in front of him in front of everybody like in front of everybody and then everybody was just like, it was like, they like, they're just like looking at him, man. And he was just like, I mean, he was just like surprised, <laughs> he was shook, man. He was really shook. And Killed I was him. just like, fuck. I was like, fuck. And then the teacher got me in trouble because I, I put it, I like pointed him out. I was just like, apparently, like before I wrap my shit, yeah. I was just like, apparently, you know, somebody, so and so, whatever, wants to make a diss track and everything. I was like, all right, well, tell me what you think about this type of shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it's like, I, you know, then I did my thing. And then once once I stopped, you know, I I went I walked off the stage and I gave it to the, to the teacher that hosts that shit, and she was just like, "Hey, this isn't a place to be dissing people." And then I'm just like, <laughs> "All right, whatever." I just walked off. But she was smiling, bro. She was smiling, bro, when she told me that because I feel like she probably knew, like, "Damn, like <laughs> this kid has balls." You know what I'm saying? And so, so yeah, it was crazy, bro. Then um, so that happened, and then like a week passed by. The next week, I'm in that same class. Then I hear again, yo, he put out a response. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, bro? Like, <laughs> just little kids just going to add, bro. bro. I'm just like, he really put out a response. And so I heard it. And I was like, oh, my God, man. And then so I heard it. There was, it, I heard it like, like two days before karaoke was coming around. So I was like, all right, I ain't going to trip. I got time to fucking just write. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I was able to write within those two days. And then I dissed them again. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing happened. Everybody was like, bro, like, you know, like, he's dissing you right in front of you. And you're making, like, <laughs> diss tracks and posting them on YouTube and shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like um, everybody was just like, damn. Like, damn. And I think it happened a third time. But... I think the third time I didn't even really like, I didn't, I didn't really respond or anything like that. I think at the third time, that's when everybody was just like, all right, like it's over, you know, like, yeah. you know, like no more. <laughs> he won. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He won. He did it in front of you. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, then, uh, I started doing more karaoke, just rapping my own shit. And it started, I noticed that more people started like, like packing the cafeteria more and i was just like what the fuck and i guess that a lot of the seventh and sixth graders were skipping class to go watch me perform damn that's sick yeah so so some of the some of them would would be skipping class to go watch me perform and then um what's it called i remember uh one of our teachers who like hosts um like you know that like the assemblies all the activities and stuff like that um, she was, I guess she was like stressing out about like, you know, what she should do. Cause she had a lot of shit going on whatever. And one of my homies who, who had her for, for a class was like, Hey, you should have Armando perform. And then they started telling her like everybody, the whole class, I guess, or I don't know if it was the whole class, but one of my homies was like telling her, you know, of everything, you know, what was going on, what I was doing, the whole cafeteria thing. So she ended up calling me in her class and then she ended up asking me, you know, like, Hey, like I heard you. You know, you like, you rap and that you're good. She's like, you know, people are telling me about you. She's like, how would you feel about performing at the end of the year or something? Because around that time when I started doing that, it was already getting close to the end of the year. Um, and so what's it called? Um, she was just saying like, 
we'll have you we'll have you perform and then like we'll give you this much time to do what you got to do and so i did it uh, i ended up doing it and i did it in front of the whole school and then after that my principal came up with the idea she was like she's like i have a great idea she's like she's like you did really good everybody loved you she's like i love how you look so adapted to it you know what i mean like you look so like you've done it before she's like She's like, I'm going to take a picture of you off of my phone. She's like, I'm going to go into my office tonight and I'm going to print off like hundreds of pictures of you. And she's like, and you're going to sit out through all three lunches and you're going to sign autographs for every single kid. That's and then cool. I'm just like, what the hell? And I was just like, damn, I was thinking, I was like, okay, maybe this is going like a little too far. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. I was just like, but maybe not. I was like, so, um, so I was like, fuck you. I was like, I'll do it. I get to skip like two classes. I was like, why not? <laughs> and so the cool thing about it was that I, uh, she let me like pull out some of my homies out of class to sit up there and help me. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it was cool. It was really cool. I got to pull them out of class too. And um, it was just dope, bro. I ended up sitting up there through all three lunches, signing autographs for, for just almost every single like kid, eighth, sixth, and seventh grade, all of them, bro. And there's, it's crazy because there's, there's a lot of people a lot of those kids uh, where I signed for and like to this day, they'll send me like Snapchats of them still having that picture. That's you so know? I was about to and ask like, you. bro, they're just like, bro, like, you know, I was like, cause you're one, one of these days, bro. One of these days, like you have to bro. if you keep going one of these, you know, you're going to make it. And even my principal has said that when, once she had, like, she had announced me uh, that I was going to be signing um, autographs and shit. She was all like, you know, she's like, this is Armando. She's like, a lot of you guys seen him at the assembly. He's going to be really big one day. And she's like, so if I were you guys, she's like, I'm giving you guys a chance to get his autograph right now. That's so late. sweet. And so it was just really cool, man. There's a lot of people who were there who can vouch for that, who witnessed that happen. And that's where, that's where a lot of the fan base comes from as well, because those are like really day one people who seen that shit happen in front of their eyes, you know? It's a gross. So it's, it's really... It's really cool, bro. It's really cool. You know, people telling me that every day, you know, saying like, it's crazy how far you've come, even though if it's not huge, but you're, you can see that it's just gaining and gaining. Um, yeah. yeah what, man. Uh, what, what happens then, after uh, that? What happens after eighth grade? So, so eighth, so eighth grade, uh, freshman year comes around. Uh, I'm still in music. Uh, and I'm still, that's when I, that's when I decided to start working on my very first mixtape. Um, it's called, the, I call it the break it down mixtape uh it's 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 not on the messy room um profile or anything it's it's on my main one i only have it on um on my soundcloud because yeah. at that time i was just ripping beats off of youtube and then just recording <laughs> but um so freshman year came around and then uh the guy i had beef with uh we ended up having a class together oh shit yeah we ended up having a class how together. was that how was that awkwardness and honestly like like I wasn't awkward on my part. Like, I just didn't give a fuck, like, because I was just like, you know, like, it wasn't no personal thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. It really wasn't a personal thing at all. Like, it was just, at that point, I was just like, it's just music, you know? It doesn't matter. So uh, we ended up having a class together, and then we started talking and everything, and, you know, we, we, we were just cool. We just became cool. I just started, I think he saw that I was acting cool, you know? And, like, you know, I didn't make it awkward or anything, and I feel like he probably automatically, like, caught the vibe like okay you know like he ain't tripping you know so we started talking we became really cool you know we started becoming cool friends and um you know i started asking him like you know like what what equipment did you have what mic did you use you know when you, when you put out those diss tracks with yeah when you put out those diss tracks to me and stuff and you know he was telling me and then um i was like man I was like, that's dope bro i was like I was like, man, like, you know, you should let me come over. We should work on a track. We should record or something. And, and that's when we were just like, all right, hell yeah, you know. And then we had each other on Snapchat, and he had Snapchat me. He was just like, yo, he's like, you know, like, whatever happened, you know, in eighth grade, like, that's eighth grade, right? You know, like, you know, like <laughs> there, ain't no, there ain't no problem or anything. I was like, fuck no, bro, like, there ain't no problem. And it's, be cool, and it's really cool because he showed, like, a lot of love to it because um, he actually ended up letting me borrow his studio equipment. Wow. to record yeah to record uh my first my first project and i recorded that here at my house just in my living room i had you know i just had the pop filter the the you know the drive a desktop computer and i was recording off of audacity too so it's like Damn, you know and OG. i didn't i i didn't even have like the full program it was just with what I, it was just like the demo version of what i had so wow. um i just started fucking with that and really trying to just 
master down what I had because, you know, I couldn't afford, you know, to buy the the exclusive versions and shit like that. Um, so I ended up making that tape and then I put out the tape and, you know, I, I gave him his equipment back and everything, you know. Um, he doesn't make music to this day, um, but he, uh, we do, you know, he does show a lot of support and a lot of love to it. Um, but if it wasn't for him, you know, I wouldn't have been able to, to really get that first project out. And that first project is what kind of helped me start my, my own platform because um, of how, I guess, different it was. Because around that time, that's when Young Thug was coming up. That's when the trap, autotune, all that shit was coming into place. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's when it was starting to take over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me doing that, you know, it was different from what, what was going on, what was coming up now. And I just decided to kind of really stick to those roots and help those roots grow into different, you know, roots and within music and different sounds. So um, it was able to establish what a the sound I have now and what a sound I have before and everything. It's going to all link up to future sounds. But um, it's it was, it was really cool. I was able to get that out of the way. And then uh, the talent show was coming up in high school. And I didn't do it my freshman year. I don't know why I didn't do it my freshman year. I think I kind of just wanted to sit back and just, you know, see, you know, what was what, what was the high school vibe about. You know, it was only my freshman year, so I was just adapting. Um, but other than that, my freshman year, the only thing I had was pretty much um, dropping that project. And then I ended up going into a label, a group. Uh, they, they went by Trill Empire Music Group. It's, uh, it's based over here in Top Edition, Buena. So it's like um, I ended up joining a group and, you know, we, we made a bunch of songs. Um, those songs ended up t being taken down because of a lot of personal shit. Um, oh, a lot shit. of, you know, a lot of things being said, beef and stuff like that. And it was just over the dumbest shit, bro. And it was just like, you know what? Like, this is just it's a to this is toxic at this point. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> like, I got I got a dip. I got a dip. So. Mm -hmm. I ended up leaving the group and contracts were, were, were involved too. Like, Oh wow. You know, yeah, this contract, there were contracts involved as well. Um, I actually almost got plugged in with season mill records. I don't know if it was season mill who was all running at that point, but um, one of them had checked me out. One of them, they were like linked to Suave and all and somehow. Yeah. Um, I forgot exactly who it was, but they said they knew him and everything. And I was like in eighth grade. So, I was just like, uh, you know, I didn't know nothing about it. So I was like, nah, I'm cool. And then this group came by. The only reason why I was just like, you know, like I really considered it and joining the group was because like, fuck, like I was itching to make music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I really need to make music because the only way I was getting music out was by obviously what I did with school, but that was able to help me build a platform to people asking me to perform at their quinceañeras, you know, people asking me to perform at birthday parties, you know, uh, special events and stuff like that. So that was the only way I was able to get music out. So at that point uh, in freshman year, I was like, yo, like, I really want to, you know, give people shit to bump through their speakers. So I was like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a roll with the wheels on this one. I'm gonna join them. And as we started making music, you know, we, we made a couple bangers at that time. Um, and then, like I said, you know, personal shit just popped off, you know, certain things being said, you know, um, you know, people believing that, you know, that they were the ones who put me where I am, you know what I mean? And That's stuff classic, like that. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I was just like, you know, I was like, I can't, I can't do that because, you know, I was like, I, I make me who I am, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, Nobody makes you're the problem. Me. Nobody makes me, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I was just like, I got to bounce. I ended up bouncing, you know, a lot of, some of those songs were, were taken down. I think one song we had as a song that I have on SoundCloud um, it's at like 6k it reached like it reached like 8k on youtube but that producer who recorded us had took that that song down oh shit so by now that song would have had way more than 8k you know so i was like fuck man um and then yeah uh, all that what happened within like my freshman year sophomore year came around and um i was kind of still working with them but i was more kind of doing my own thing and I actually ended up doing the, the talent show my freshman year, and I actually ended up taking first place. Um, oh, wow. I, think, I think my principal had told me something that, like, I was, like, one of the first, like, underclassmen to win first place because oh. a, lot of the, a lot of the talent show first place winners were, like, were, like all seniors, you know? Uh, and then with that, I just, uh, 
I just kept writing, bro. I, I, I had left the group around that time and I just started writing. I had no way of recording or anything. And I just stuck to writing, writing, writing. And then junior year was started coming around. And that's when I started, my mentality really started thinking like, yo, like with the people I had built following me and the people telling me the stuff they were telling me at that time already, I was thinking like, yo, like what I say means something to some people, you know, like people listen to what I have to say. And I was really thinking like, I got to be cautious on what I say because I'm starting to become an influence, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's when the mom- that's when the momentum really started building up more and more from there because I was just starting to see, see like where it was really going and, and the fact that, listening. that people were listening and people really, really believed in me. You know, people put in a lot of faith and believe in me that I never had in myself, That's you know. Nice. So it was just like I really took that and, and, you know, ran with it. So I just started writing, writing, and I was like, you know what? I started looking more into it, I, you know. I was, you know, I started looking at studios to book, uh, studio sessions, you know. And I, the first session, actually the first session I booked uh, when I decided uh, to work on the album, was when the mentality changed and I started thinking like, yo, like I got to start thinking more reality. What really happens? You know what I'm saying? Cause when I was rapping before, it was just like rapping, you know, like about, you know, what everybody was rapping about, about that time. So I was like, I really want to be realistic with my music. So mm. that's when I started looking more into like what goes around, around topping you know, it's known for gang violence, things like that. You know, a lot of negative shit. And I was like, fuck man, I, was like, I really want to change that image because me when hey, i was introduced huh? hey, uh, what's up bro um do you, do you have a better a better spot we, uh for the like i don't know like i feel like i can still hear like the construction just a little bit brother yeah bro yeah bro definitely definitely hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah you're good i can always cut this out you're good brother people get the exclusive bro this is like behind the scenes type of shit um, um all right but anyway now right, we're so, good. Now so, we're but good. yeah you book you book your, your 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 session and you want to start talking about you know top edition and whatnot yeah, so, you know, I started looking, you know, when once I started seeing the confidence and the, and, the, and the belief people started putting into me, that's when the mentality changed. And I was like, yo, like, I really had to be careful with how I present myself with the music because, like, I'm not only representing myself, but I'm representing where I come from and I'm representing my culture. So I was thinking, I really got to be realistic with what's going on and, so that's when the whole mentality changed, like, yo, like, I'm going to start rapping about Topnish, real life shit, you know, I'm going to talk about, you know, people who have passed away in Topnish that I knew. I'm going to talk about, you know, just the, the gang violence, things like that, a lot of the negative shit that Topnish is pretty much viewed as in what they're viewed for. Um, so I started putting that into the music and I just started writing and writing. And around that time, that's when I had came, that's when I had wrote uh, you and the track, You and Me. And I, I had wrote Flatline, actually. I wrote Flatline. Oh, sick. Um, yeah, that track's... Yeah, so I... Yeah, that track's really, really nice. And, like, that's a really storytelling. And, yeah, it's, it's just dope. Yeah, bro, I'm going to have to tell you more about that, about yeah, that yeah, track. Yeah. yeah, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll get, we're we're going to have a whole section bro. before the album. I uh, want to talk about your journey right now. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're getting into the good shit. We're going to get to the yeah, good yeah. shit. Yeah. Hey, for uh, some reason, your connection's a little bad out. right here, brother. Oh, really? Yeah. It's probably the spot. Oh, yeah. shit. Fuck it. Fuck it. If, if not, That's just go good. back outside. <laughs> I, I, I'd rather have better, <laughs> I, I'm going to no. have you work out today, bro. <laughs> nah, it's cool. It's cool. We good right here? Is it, is it working better now? Uh, it's not too bad. It's a little laggy here and there. Oh, the video or the yeah, audio? Yeah, yeah. No, just just the like video? the video. The video? Okay. All right, then cool. But, um... All right. Uh, so anyway, anyway, uh, the project. So I started working on the project, and um, that's when that's when I just really decided, like, yo, I want to start investing, and I really want to start looking into music and what I got to do to really build this platform into something bigger. So that's what I started doing, actually. And, um, you know, I, bu- I booked my first, uh, my, my first studio session. And then that didn't go as well because there was a lot of 
problems of having to deal with, you know, where the tracks went, you know, and a lot of dealing with the pointing fingers type of thing. And um, I was just, I just had to start over on the whole project, bro. So I ended up losing those tracks and having to start over on the whole album. And that's already happening in 2017. That's already, that's already like my sophomore year going into that year mm. um, or going out of that year. I mean, so me having to restart on the, on the album really sucked, bro, because I was just like, man, like there was other tracks on there that probably could have been better than what I have on there now. Yeah. Um, but I just, I was just like, you know what? I was like, fuck it. I was like, I just like, this wasn't meant to be. So I was like, I'm going to restart. I restarted on, on the whole album. And I just started writing, started writing. And then um, I ended up getting the news that that same year, once I started working on the album, and I decided like, yo, it's, the album's gonna be about gang violence, all this, et cetera, et cetera, top niche based shit. Well, that ended up changing because um, my baby mother actually ended up getting pregnant that, that same year, a little bit after I had already decided the concept of the album. Mm. So, I had to take a lot of time off with music because, you know, I really had to put my focus and not only having to graduate high school, but having to like prepare for myself for what was going to come, you know? Mm. So, so after, so after that, pretty much, I took all that time off, you know what I mean? To focus strictly on just having a family on my daughter. I think I took a good like year and a half off, probably maybe almost two years. I don't know, actually. It's somewhere he's between. like it's a little. He's like he's like it's a, a little, little blurry. He's a little like because of like I don't know. It just felt like I feel like when I got back into music, it just felt like so long, bro. Like so long since I had since I've been out of it. But to give it a perf- a perfect like, mm, I'd say like a year and a half. I took a year and a half off. Sheesh. Yeah. So so um and the only reason why i got back into music was because things didn't work out with my baby mother you know we went through a lot of things and um you know it just turned into like you know uh, something where we just knew like it's just better off you know where where we just handle everything co-parent status and everything so we were able to come to an agreement with that um and me getting out of that since I was so focused on trying to build that, have a family and stuff like that. Like I didn't have nothing else, you know, and I didn't have nothing else except like for music. And obviously like my family, my family's always there, but uh, I didn't have a lot of things except for music where I could really, really express myself, you know? So I was like, like, you know, after everything I had went through, I just started putting that into music. And that's when like, once I got out of that relationship with my baby mother, that's when that's when the whole perspective of the album changed again. So the album wasn't only going to be just about gang violence and the things that goes around here, but it's going to be a, about young parenting, young adults, and explaining that you know not only will baby mothers, women go through things like this. It's the same thing with guys. You know, there are a lot of good fathers out there who try to who try to paint a good image for all. For all dads, you know, so that's kind of like something I really, I really target. That's a crowd I really target because it's like, you know, it's like it's a reality thing. It's a real thing, you know. Young fathers do face adversity and you know have a lot of things that they have to deal with and, and cope with. And it's just me simply shining light on that, on that simple fact. Like, hey, like you can go through all these things. You can be a single dad. You can go through whatever it is you go through but you can still have a dream and chase it. And that's exactly what the concept turned into and what the concept of it is now. So now that what was once just a concept for an album is now the concept for my whole journey. So like, I'm not only doing this, you know, for, for people, for kids who were bullied, for, you know, people that went through, people who went through the stuff that I went through when I was young, but the people who went through and are going through the stuff that I'm going through now and just recently went through, you know, mm. you know, we all have, we all have something that, that keeps us going. And I feel like what keeps me going keeps a lot of other people going too. And I feel like it's, this is barely the, the peak of people starting to see that. And a lot of people respect it too. That's another thing that, that really gained attention to my music is because not only what I decided to talk about and the topics I, I, I touched on that album, but because people see, you know, like, 
you know, like, hey, you know, like, he's he's got a kid, you know, he's young, you know, he 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 puts a lot of time into it and he he tries, you know, and I feel like a lot of people really seem to like that and see that, and that's what really built like the fan base even more. It was I feel like the fan base was more built off of respect than it was off the of just the music. Exactly, exactly, yes. And it was just crazy. Like a lot of people from around Top Nation can can really vouch for what I went through, um, just because of you know the type of situation it was. Um, but I mean, now now that the album is out and everything, and all of that is what I went through within that span of 2017 to up to like when I dropped the album. You know, a lot of people view things differently, and it, it, it was crazy, man, because it was just like I faced a lot. And I put a lot on the line for that, for, for my daughter and for my baby mother, because it's like, you know, the situation caused like my viewers, my listeners and my supporters to really go down, you know? Um, so I was just like, man, like, I was like, now it's just like, nobody fucks with me in music. No, you know, nobody wants to work with me, nothing, everything like that. So that whole thing had a really big effect on not only just like me and my life personally, but it's just like, my music career and, and what what I was viewed as, you know, a lot of people lost a lot of respect for me. So I felt like I had a lot of pressure coming out of that relationship and coming back into music because it was like, yo, like people aren't going to be so gentle with it, you know? People are going to say what they want to say. People are going to feel what they feel. So it's like, yo, like this, if, if I'm going to try to come back, I'll make a comeback in this music. Like it has to be a full on fucking run like i like there's no going back if nobody like rolls with this shit then like i'm calling it quits but hmm. but so i did that bro um I, I started working again man i started working on music again and then once i came out of that that's when i ended up linking up with creos for the first time i had linked up with creos how do how, how you and Creos meet, uh, meet each other? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna tell you right now. So okay, after all, after all of that, I was currently working on my album, right? And me and my baby mother weren't together at that time. I think my 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 daughter was barely almost getting ready to arrive. Um, so we uh we had this sort of like idea that Dave Certified had pitched and him wanting to start a label. He wanted to branch off off of Gat. Mm -hmm. So so he was like, yo, he's like, I really want to, you know, I really want to start off this label. We're gonna be branching off of this. And contracts were involved in that as well. Um, it was a legit Gat contract. So um, he was just pitching the idea. He was like, look, he's like, I got this other guy that I want you to come in touch with. I want you guys to talk, get to know each other. And, you know, see what each other's sounds are like and everything and try to create something, you know, because like, I really want to make sure that who I bring into this label and bring into this group is able to work, you know, what I mean? with with anybody, with everybody I have involved. Yeah. So he ended up he ended up creating a group, a group message on Instagram. And we we he introduced Creos and then he introduced me. And then so me and Creos started just talking in, in that group chat and Dave certified was just explaining like, look, like. The purpose of this is I want you guys to talk, get to know each other, share some ideas and music and try to create something. He's like, you know, he's like, I really think that you guys could do something. So let's just give it a try. And me and Chris were just like, all right, you know, fuck it. We'll do it. So we actually ended up making a track. And at that time, I'm, I'm going to YB Tech. So and I'm going for digital media. And you went to digital media, obviously. So you know how they have the studios, the booths and everything. Yeah. So. Um, the first collab me and Creos actually did, we never linked in person. It was just, he sent me shit through his email and then I got it, I wrote to it. And then at YB Tech, that's where I recorded my verse and sent it back to him. So we did that track and then we ended up dropping it, right? I mean, this is how I kind of knew, like me and Creos kind of thought the same because we dropped that track, we posted it, we're telling everybody go share and everything. And it just doesn't do as good. Really, it doesn't do good. It's like a flop, pretty much. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like a flop, pretty much. And um, this is how I knew because 
I don't know if it was like a couple of weeks later or, or a couple of months later, uh, me and Krios, we actually like went, went without being in touch for a little while after that, actually. I don't know if it was a couple months or if it was a year. It was either like a couple months close to a year or for sure like a year. A long um, time. But I, like I had him on Snapchat and everything. We had each other on Snapchat once we got introduced to each other. We got all, all each other's info. And so I was seeing him, you know, starting to like post consistently, you know, with music, with, you know, shit he was going to have coming. And I think one of the first things that what we started keep was spark the conversation was he had posted something about him being on Yakima Herald. And I had slid up on it and we started talking from there. We started talking just like ideas and stuff like that. Um, and I had went and looked back for that first track we had dropped together and it was taken off. He dropped it on his page and he took it off. So I was like, oh, I was like, all right. So homeboy thought I was trash. I was like, uh, he I was trash. So she, she I was fell like, away. <laughs> no, I was just like, I was like, good though. I was just like, good. Because honestly, I, like, I feel like I could have done way better on that song. And obviously he feels like he probably could have done way better on that one. Or I could have been. Either way, I really don't care because I know I could have done better. And exactly. if you were to think, if you were to think that, you know, then I would agree with him. I wouldn't be offended at all. Um, that's another, another reason why me and him work really well together. But so that time came by after we dropped our first track, we started talking, we just started talking like dope ideas that would be sick to do. And not only like within music, but with things that had to do with it. Um, so we were, we we're just talking ideas and we just started keeping in touch more every single day, every single day. Um, and then he was just like, yo, he's like, he's like, I have these songs, you know, that I, I really want to try doing something to. So he's like, you should come over and we should link, you know? And I was just like, hell yeah, bro. I was like, definitely. I was like, honestly, bro, like, I feel like, you know, if we work together and we work physically, like, and we try to build like a friendship off of music, you know, it'll be dope, you know, what we could create in music so he was like yeah it's like dope he was all for it we ended up linking up and we created a song that he was he wasn't going to put on his project and then we ended up like going through all the beats that he was going to put on his project and i was like fuck i was like these beats are fire because Krios does no wrong with beats like he does no wrong with beats at all <laughs> Let's go. And, and at that time, he was working, I believe he was working on the Messy Room Sessions tape. That was like his, like our first debut, kind of like as a label type of thing. But um, not exactly. It was just kind of to debut the idea. Um, so he was playing beats and he played a beat for Want Me. Um, that's a track that he has out that you can go check. And um, he has I'm a Dog. Those are like the two songs that like, really really like gained a lot of attention and those were like my comeback songs <laughs> like to be perfectly honest mm. that whole tape was like it built a lot um he was playing those beats to those songs and i just started like i had verses like ready because like i said like throughout the time i took off and everything i was just writing so i had verses ready to go like, like hell bro so so he was playing beats through and want me came on boom i wrapped the verse for want me like, all right, yeah, we're going to record that. We're going to record that. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, cool. I was like, fuck yeah. I was like, okay, cool. I got his attention. Mm -hmm. So so he's like, all right, dope, dope. He plays I'm a dog next. I lay down a verse for that. And he's like, all right. <laughs> he's like, so now, now, he's on, now he's on two songs off of the project. And yeah. it was crazy because so, you know, he did that whole project and I was featured on two tracks. And once he released that project, on um on all platforms on itunes you know how you get those like the certain the little stars you know yeah. for like the most trending ones the only songs that were trending on that project were the two songs i was featured on oh hell yeah you know and so like i was sharing it and people were like going like y'all like this is fire this is fire and everything and that's when like the momentum everything started building up back again and i'm just like okay i'm like so like this Starting is where it's all come from yeah and i'm just like all right so I was like now i'm kind of starting to see that it's coming back so i tell creos like bro like you know like we gotta work we gotta start working more like people like what we create like we could create so much good shit 
and he's like, just like honestly, like saying, you know, people are hitting him up, telling him the same shit, how fire shit's coming out. So we started working more and more and more. And the, op- the opportunity to perform for Mozzie came up. Mm. And I was going to do that shit by myself. And I was just going to like have the beats and rap live and everything like that. But I was just like, yo, I was like, I really want to. I really want to put Creos on. Like, I feel like, you know what I mean? We, I really wanted to perform those songs we had. And so I told him about the idea and he was like, I'm with it. So we decided to run with it. And we're, we're already like out of high school at this point, obviously, um, because we didn't link up until I'd say like towards the end of my senior year. That's when Dave Certified introduced us. And then the rest of that time, it was just consistently just writing, writing, writing. That's all it was pretty much, aside from performing. But we had linked up and we're just like, all right, we're gonna make some, we're gonna, Chris came up with the idea. Let's just make a whole tape, mixtape, and let's just pre- debut that at the show. And then we'll release it the same night of the show. That's It'll sick. be everywhere. So we're like, I'm like, all right, I think, hell yeah, that's a dope idea. Let's do that shit. So, um, Kills is like, he's like, you know, it's like good shit. You know, he's like good shit. He's like, I like, you know, how you were making the moves and you're not only thinking about yourself because at that time, like, I really feel like I had new Creos enough already to where we connected on another level besides music. You know, like we really connected. We were both, we both viewed ourselves kind of like a, like as a, not exactly outcast, but like underdogs, you know, in a way. Um, so, and we think exactly alike. So we were just thinking, you know, we should really start working way more. And so after after that, pretty much, Krios had asked, he was just like, oh, he's like, we did really good, you know, off of the Messy Room Sessions tape. He's like, I want to start this label. He's like, I really want to start this label. He's like, because what we're doing what, and what we, what we had going for us at that time, what we knew was going to come, we had already knew, like, oh, like, it's a must. We have to make it happen. So he told me, he's like, look, he's like, I got this label. I want to start Messy Room Records. He's like, it's pretty much off of the Messy Room Session EP. He's like, he's like, me and you. He's like, let's just, let's just work and let's just push this shit. And I'm just like, fuck yeah, bro. Like, hell yeah. He's like, like, like you know, he's like, I like how you're not, you're not selfless about what the idea is. And you, you try to make sure that, that what you're doing is going to help benefit everybody else pretty much. And so he had that same mentality. And he was saying like, yo, like, let's do it, bro. Like, let's do it. Like the vision and, and the connection, everything was already there. So we just decided to roll with it. And we kept, we kept making music. And at that same time, I also kept making sure like, yo, like I got to make sure I get this album done, you know? So that's when I, that's when my focus went back to the album and I started working on the album. And then Chris was pretty much just waiting. He was just like saying like, you know, when you're ready, let's do it. And he's like, you know, when you're ready to record, let's record. He didn't charge me for no beats, nothing like that. And he just really helped me out and he really helped boost my career in a whole different way. And I have to give him a lot of credit for like what, where I'm at right now and what's, what's going for us because without him, like it just, none of it would really be possible. Like I say that about like the people who listen and everything like that, but if it wasn't for Creos, I wouldn't have people who are able to listen to my music. You know, like I would have no way of giving these people music to share and to listen to. So it's like Creos is a big, big reason why this has gone to where it's gone so far. And up to now, like what we have now, that's all led up to what we're building right now to all like, cause people just see it. People see, you know, the dynamic duo that we have, you know, but there's, the, I mean, there's so many dynamic duos down here, honestly, like there's a lot of good talent. And that's one thing that me and Creos were like, we see and we're like, bro, like we have to push this talent everywhere. Cause the talent we have in the Valley is just too good to not be noticed, you know? Yeah. So that's why we really work and we just really work to show people like, hey, like, you work, just take chance, take, take risk. You never know what can happen, you know, and just don't be, don't be selfish and just try to make the best out of what you have. And me and Creos, we just work really hard on, on making sure people understand that and getting people to realize that because we just care, bro. We genuinely care 
about the music community because, you know, uh, Krios has said it many times, it's all about equal opportunity and that's what everybody deserves. Everybody has a story to why they do shit. And, you know, and exactly the story that I told you right now is the exact reason why Krios, you know, wants to help me because he knows, you know, like, he knows adversity when he sees it, when people, when people face it, he knows it and he can, he can spot that. So that's why he created a good opportunity for me. So it's now it's my job to be able to create those opportunities for everybody else. You know, passing the and torch. it's dope, bro. Passing the torch, pretty much <laughs> passing the torch, but it's all just positive energy. We're just trying to spread, bro. That's all it is pretty much. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's a good story, dude. That's a good fucking story. <laughs> I'm just here. Well, the, I mean, that's the journey. That's the journey of it. Yeah, you know, that's the journey of it. There's a lot of like, there's a, there's a lot of di- other stories that I can explain. You know, that that link up to it. That's just kind of like pretty much like the summary. But like, I would need like Creos and them here to like. Explain oh, don't worry. We're gonna, have, we're gonna have we're gonna have we're gonna have a messy room. We need to get one of the together. whole label, bro. Yeah, we need to get yeah, one of the whole yeah, label. Yeah. So <laughs> you know what's so funny is we're, I'm gonna have the trilogy first. So I'm I'm I got Creos array. I got you, and I'm gonna get Wise. It with his own and then we're gonna all come together with all all, all one big year in view yeah i already got a plan don't worry bro i already, I already got it. no um <laughs> fuck um how oh yeah what's your really uh how, how did you uh come in contact with uh dave and big tone oh so dave I mean, and big go ahead, tone tell, go dave ahead, certified. Tell me that so, so so what dave certified um it's funny um actually once I was in elementary, I think I was like probably like fifth grade, maybe. Uh, David, that David had got into music around that time. Dave Certified had got into elementary, music. and <laughs> and like like so, <laughs> he was he was into it, and then he was tell he was like friends with a homie that I have who lived who lived like right across from me, and me and one of my best friends, his name is Josh. Um, we were we were always like freestyling, fucking around, just you know, with shit like that. And he told me, you know, he was saying like, "Yo, it's like if you guys want to rap, you know, it's like Dave certifies. Is, is he's hosting these sessions, these writing sessions at his house in his garage." And we're just like, "The fuck!" And so my wait, friend wait, wait, didn't wait, go. Wait, 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 wait. Go. when is this? Because I, I thought I thought you said elementary. Elementary. This is this is all happening during elementary. Yeah, because obviously you know David's older than me. Um, so like when, so once he, once David like really got into music, he started hosting these sessions and I went to those sessions and then it just like, it like, I don't know, less people stopped going and the motivation was just lost. So I just never went back to it. You know, it was just kind of like something I was interested in, but like never fully considered. And I feel like that's what a lot of people, what it was, it's just people who weren't serious. And at that time I wasn't serious because I'm an elementary, you know what I mean? I don't know what the fuck I want to do. So it's like, you know, he was hosting these sessions and, you know, he ended up doing his own thing. A lot of people stopped doing, he ended up, you know, he's doing his own thing, writing, perfecting his craft, uh, which obviously you would be able to see that over the years because, you know, he's, he's worked a lot. He's worked very hard to get where he's at right now. And, you know, he's investing into himself and he knows a lot. He's very helpful. You know, he always, he always tells me he's willing to help and stuff like that. And that's just kind of like how we knew each other. We're both from Toppenish. And, you know, we, you know, once the word got around about me making music, obviously that automatically put me in the same category label of where he was at, of a local rapper, you know? So he ended up finding out about me, you know, and then we just, we just ended up keeping in contact ever since then, you know, we would just talk music, we would fall out of touch, but we would always keep back in touch no matter what. And we would just talk moves, talk ideas, talk collabs. Um, But, you know, a lot of, we just weren't able to work as, as often as we would have liked to just because of the fact that like once I was when I was ready to make a move or make moves you know he had shit he was going on and dealing with you know when he was ready I had shit going on that I was dealing with you know what I mean so it was just like timing was really was really off when it come down when it came down to linking so um we've just known each other for a while because we kind of I guess you can kind of say we grew up together within the music community not exactly like childhood yeah. um but we, but we did know of each other and everything you know we, we were cool it was all love and everything we just weren't we just wouldn't hang out a lot or anything you know um so it was just kind of we just kind of like grew, grew 
grew up together in the music community around here locally. And, you know, he showed me a lot of ropes to a lot of things. And he gave me advice. He helped me out, things like that. So, you know, grateful for that guy. And I'll always be grateful for the for the hand he holds out. And he's nothing but a great dude. Yeah, dude. And I, rec- I recommend, you know, if you don't work with them, then you're a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we just we just known each other, bro, since since we were young and bro, because we just kind of keep the talent, you know. We saw we saw where, where everything could go. Mm. And how about Big Tony? And it's, and it's, but Big Tony, same thing because uh, Big Tony and Dave Certified are actually really good friends. They're like best yeah. friends. I don't yeah, know yeah. if you know that, but yeah, because Dave, you went to YB Tech with them too, right? So yeah, we all got history. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. They're they're really cool. They're so that's how I got introduced to them to Big Tony because uh, because of David. They were all you know working together. They even had this little group thing that they were doing. Um, but I, like I said, I just pretty much just by getting plugged in with David, he was able to plug me in with Tony and with all these other artists that were out there. Mm. And um, ever since that, me and Tony, you know, we were cool. Um, we didn't start working a lot until until recently. Recently now, um, you know, he had a lot of things that, you know, whatever he was going on with, uh, he had a, a very long, I don't know if it was too long of a run. I would say too long because of how good he is. But he had a pretty long run with without doing anything with music. And me, I'm just glad he's found his way back into music because I mean, look what that's doing for him now, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's just, just it's the same. It's the same thing with David. David pretty much introduced me to Big Tony, and we we were making music since we were younger, and we just always knew about, about each other. And it's just the same thing. We saw we just saw talent in each other, and we just knew that we were all kind of destined to do something good. Yeah. No. Um, the thing about Big Tony, dude, I know uh, he, he's been gone for so long, and then I'm so happy that he's back. And now everyone's like built, like since he's been gone, everyone's been building and all his mm-hmm. friends, all his friends are ready to bring him up with them. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly, bro. That's why. And I, and I feel like with Tony, it's like, well, like with me too, man, I feel like, you know, um, never, never let anybody like fall, you know, it's just like, there, there's always a possible way to bring somebody up and, Tony, Tony is really good. Same thing with his little brother, his little brother, Marcus. He's mm-hmm. incredible, incredible cover art specialist. I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, no, don't worry. But, We're going to get him on interview. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, bro. Um, those guys, they're, they're really cool. They're something else, man. Um, Tony and Marcus, they're both some, something else. They both have genuine personalities, you know. And uh, Tony, Tony is a great guy. He's always looking out for for one another he's 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 caring his his willing to do things for people it's just it's just like crazy man like he just he's just full with nothing but like love and and genuine genuine passion you know for doing whatever he does um so it's just crazy tony has always been like that since the first day i met him same thing with uh dave certified um I've always knew Tony was good, though. A lot of people, a lot of people in the community around Top Niche, and not only Top Niche, because you know Tony's well known from other places besides Top Niche. Um, but a lot of people know that you know he's really good, and a lot of people have known that. And I feel like you know the credit he gets is is well deserved. Um, and same thing with you. I'm just happy he's he's back in it, bro. Because I don't know, that's just we, ta- we if you wouldn't, waiting, that's just we talent, waiting. bro. That's just talent going to waste, bro. If you wouldn't um but yeah much love for those guys i just i just grew up with them pretty much because of music and they've done nothing but show me love and i just continue to do the thing the same thing back to them yeah yeah man um let me see let me see what else i got in here um dun, dun, dun. Uh, where, who are some of your influences because when i was listening to the album i could um uh, I can hear a little bit of Nipsey Hustle in there. I can hear some Drake. I can hear some Kendrick Lamar. Is is, is that? Is that <laughs> the, but but it's it's not the. It's more just like the, you can tell like influence. I mean, like it's a good influence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you, bro. Um, well, I mean, those those are really. I mean, my influences vary, bro. Like a lot, like a lot. <laughs> it's Go crazy. ahead, name them off. Just start naming names. Um, I would I would say like me. Because I grew up with my mom, um, they're not much artists that 
that are that people really listen to now and stuff like that but there's just they bring back memories of just music that I love. I remember when I was young, bro, uh, my 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 older brother and sister, they would snitch on me because I would be listening to Afro Man's uh, album, uh, the whole, whole 45 <laughs> thing. They would tell my mom and dad, oh, I was listening to that, you know, <laughs> they'd get me in trouble. I remember shit like that, bro. And I would be, I remember I would sneak that CD because um, when I was small in elementary, I think it was like kindergarten, first grade around that time. That's when they had the portable CD players. You remember that? Forty the mm. portable CD players. Go back. <laughs> yeah. I would I would jack that album up from my dad's uh, CD case thing. I'd be bumping that shit, bro. I'd be taking that thing with me everywhere. I even have a picture of me, you know, with the CD player and everything that I would always yeah. use. Um, but no, man. I mean, like, like Afro Man. Uh, who else would I say? Like, I say. A lot would be like Tupac, Biggie. Um, Jay Z was a very small influence, but that small influence was already big enough. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, look, I mean, I already know what, what Jay Z is now. You know, he's a legend. Um, but it's just like I wasn't much of a Jay Z fan, but his some of his songs really are influential, and in and I think the reason why Jay Z is a big part is because my main influence is. Um, J. Cole and J. Cole is the one who who discovered J., um, you know uh, Dreamville yeah. Dream, like J. Cole discovered Dreamville and everything like oh, that yeah, but, yeah, Dreamville, yeah. but Dreamville is, is connected obviously to Rockefeller it's like an underbrella label you know so like Jay-Z discovered J. Cole and J. Cole discovering all these other artists and stuff like that um, but that's another reason why because I mean if, if Jay-Z would have never you know been Jay-Z he would have never created J. Cole you know and so and then, I look up there's a whole yeah uh but yeah you're definitely right uh Kendrick is a big influence on there uh Nipsey um what's it called J. Cole <laughs> actually there's there's a lot of other artists too who don't even aren't even part of rap like uh more like with R&B like LMA I like LMA SZA I'm very into different types um pretty much uh, I'd say like old school rappers, Nas mm. and Pog, Biggie, um, Craig Mack. Craig Mack was a big one. Mm. Um, but I would say pretty much those rappers, bro. Not a lot of rappers, but those are definitely like my top ones that I favorite. Mm. But there's a lot of like other rappers, cause especially with now, I listen to only local rappers. A lot of local rappers inspire me. I don't even listen to a lot of mainstream anymore. Yeah. But growing up to and, and to growing up to influence me to to what I have out now, and you know people that I look up to definitely like Biggie, Tupac, Drake, Kendrick, uh, yeah, that's storytelling Cole. vibe. Yeah, pretty much. Those those are those are the the influences right there. And there's many there's many more that don't even revolve around music. Yeah. Um, who are you listening to right now? Like, right what, now? What's, what's your daily playlist right now? Honestly, bro, I've been stuck on that wise, that wise provision album. Hey. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but honestly, the only time I really like listen to big mainstream artists is like when they drop something new, you know what I'm saying? Um, but majority of the time I just listen to local rappers, bro. Honestly, mm -hmm. I listen. I listen to to Six Mag. Um, I listen to uh, obviously Creos, Wise. Um, I listen to a lot of the people I, uh, that are like really in my age group, you know. Because I don't oh, know. Yeah. I feel like me. I'm twenty. I'm twenty years old. Wow. But now, what I listen to, uh, I mainly listen to to like local rappers bro to be perfectly honest mm. six mag is definitely one of them uh because you know xt all those guys they're doing their thing they're really they're really creating a movement and i like that because i mean it's dope it's really dope you get to see that happen you know yeah um, there's like little small there's like multiple movements going around yeah so it's area. like yeah exactly so so yeah definitely uh six mag xt all those guys um 222 obviously um I listen to pretty much just those people pretty much that 
I see that are really like, you know, serious about music and consistent with it pretty much. Because you I mean you can hear it in the music. Yeah. You know? There's yeah, a, no, there's different ways to view it, I it's, guess. It, yeah, it's crazy, bro. So much talent, so much uh just high quality music in this area, dude. I know, man. It's incre- it's incredible, bro. It's it's dope, man. I can't wait to see like what more artists create. Like with art within artists that haven't linked up yet, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> it's so crazy. it's like it's gonna be dope, bro. It's gonna be really, really dope. Yeah, dude. It's gonna be really sick. Yeah, yeah. Dre, I can't Dre, wait, man. Yeah, Dre, Dre, sending me, sending me some stuff for the album pretty soon. It's no, it's, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty fucking stupid hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can't wait, bro. This shit's gonna be dope, man. I know, I definitely see Dre doing her thing. Shout out Dre, she's really, she's a really dope producer, man. She's all over the place, I and mean, you got to do nothing but respect that and show love to that. Yeah, man. It's dope yeah. to see. She just announced her sob rbe uh, place. Oh, I seen that. I seen that. Congrats to her though. She's watching yeah, this. Congrats. Yo, Congrats. Yo. Hats off to that shit. I'm yeah. dope. Yeah, she's such a great personality, dude. I just I love her, man. She I can't wait to get her on another one. <laughs> she's she's really funny. She's really funny though. Her yeah. snaps are hilarious. <laughs> she's like, stop being a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, man, for real. Yeah, we gotta um, get we gotta get some merch for her. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna brand off of that, huh? She's gonna turn yeah. to a quote. Yeah, yeah. Now, brother, uh, anything, anything that you want to talk about? Uh, you want to get off your chest? Um, nah, man. Um, pretty much just about the label, man. And you know, um, I'm really excited for what the label's like gonna be doing. Oh yeah, hold on, hold on. Where, where, where you see yourself five to ten years from now? Five to ten years from now. Mm. Hmm. I think I see myself being like at the point where I can finally like be comfortable in waking up and knowing that music is is a job for me now. You know, where you know I'm pretty much my own. I picture myself being my own boss at that point. That's pretty much what I see. I see myself um, really branching something big off of Messy Room and Messy Room being something way bigger than what it is now. Um, And I see nothing but like independent artists coming from that label who are going to like, honestly, five, five years from now, I see myself being my own boss. Hell yeah, man. In all honesty, in all honesty. And honestly, I just see myself more being involved with the label and making the label something bigger. Yeah, bro. You have that mindset, bro. You have that fucking, you're able to talk to people very, very, you have a good, you're a good people person. You have a good mindset, a business, a business mindset. I definitely see, you know, like you're going to blow, man. Like this whole, all the people we're talking to now, you know, I think Creel's had this song. He's like, everyone we, we've been involved with. <laughs> like that shit, that's just true, yeah, bro. Yeah. Pretty much yeah, what it exactly, is, bro. Exactly, exactly. Exactly what it is, man. And that's exactly why it's just, it's all about equal opportunity. And, you know, I understand, you know, the whole charging thing when you charge people for verses and stuff like that. But, but, I mean, but, but it's fucking like, um, you have to respect your, your peers' values. Yeah. I mean, then again, you know, people really invest into themselves to get to the point where they're at. And that's understandable. My my thing my thing is that with artists trying to charge for verses who have no like credentials at all. Mm. You know? That's that's my thing. It's just like yeah, people no, fuck that shit. Yeah, like when people soon as people like now, especially now with the generation, with people trying to get into music, it's just like get to the bag, get to the bag, you know, secure the bag, get the money. And it's just like that's just such like a horrible mentality because I mean, I mean, it's not because I mean, you're money hungry. You're showing your money hungry. Yeah, but, but you're whoring out like, the music. You know, you can't rely off of music for income because music isn't all about just income. You know, it's, it has way more to do with just money, you know? And I don't know. I feel like nowadays with the new generation, they're just not, they don't really see the true meaning of music and the business part of it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, look at your video at la- um, 
<laughs> glitch, glitch a second. It has, it has you like a freeze frame. Oh, there you go. There you go. You're good. <laughs> Don't worry. You're, yeah, you and me. You, you're good. You, you'll 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 see it in the post production, and you're gonna be like, you're gonna be like, oh fuck. Don't worry. I'll, I'll see if I can fix it. <laughs> nah, bro. Um, it caught, it caught yeah. you <laughs> Nah, bro. But um, nah, but yeah, the vision, though. yeah, man. It's just it's just it's just like it's all positivity, bro. It's really it's just if a lot of artists work more at at no cost, then you know everything will be more productive and i'm not saying and i'm not saying that because it's just like i get what you're saying though that you know like it like with all these great talents and we if all the great great talent can come together we can make even more great like things out of it yeah exactly man exactly and it's just like to, i feel like with other people uh not everybody looks at it that way a lot of people were like oh like this dude just broke you don't want to pay the money you know what i'm saying it's just like it's it's not exactly that's not exactly what it is. I mean, it is true. There are people who can't, who are really talented with music, who have the motivation, the drive, and everything, but just don't have the money to be able to, you know, invest into themselves. Um, rather, if it's because you know they they just don't have the money, they 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 can't save up the money because of you know other shit they have to take care of, whatever. But I mean, I understand that, but that's why me and Creos really do what we do and why we represent the label as a free, free, like equal opportunity. So it's like me and Creos, we really worked really hard on our craft and on the label to be able to build that platform, to be able to help other artists out. And that's just all we care about at this point. Hmm. And like with partnership, with partnerships as well too, because I mean, it's just like, we just signed Tony, you know, we signed Tony as an artist. We just signed Marcus as our cover art specialist. So it's like right now we're not really focused on signing other people because, you know, we kind of really want to focus more on pushing them out because they're our, our first signing. So we want to make sure that, you know, they get their part in it. And we just want to be able to make sure, like, we're able to handle everything popular, you know. Um, so it's just we want to to make sure that we're creating those opportunities and we're also just making sure we're able to handle everything. Yeah, you don't want to have a full plate. Yeah, exactly. Can't. So, and, it, and it's crazy. It's harder now because it's just like, you know, a lot of people hit me up and they're just saying like, yo, like I'd be down. I'm down to go into the label. You know, put me on, bro. Put me artists. on. Put me on. Yeah, you know, and it's just like, I don't know. I, I, you know, it, it come, it, a lot of pressure does come with it, man. It does, it does come a lot because it's just like with how – especially with, with Creos, how we do everything and you know, how we handle our promo how and how we do all that. People people think like, it's just like, yo, like that's legit. It's like legit. I mean, like, yeah, it is legit, but it's just, it, it's not like we have people doing these things for us. I mean, if you think it's about legit, it, that's another it's legit, you guys. Yeah, that's, that's another reason why I give Creos a lot, of, a lot of recognition and why, you know, he deserves a lot of the, the spotlight because it's just like, when it comes to me, like, he's, like, he takes care of everything, you know? Like, me, I bring the ideas to the table, and I, I build the connections for us to make. And he just, you know, he he handles all the technical stuff, all of that shit. So, it's, like, it is very, very hard. And, you know, it is very time-consuming. Yeah, no, think I, about know, it, I know. I know. Having, having to run the label and then having to to really – make sure that you're on top of your your daily personal life with your just your regular job and you know making sure you're making time for family and things like that the important stuff you know it, it is it is hard and a lot of pressure does come with it but i mean i mean god doesn't put us through anything we can't handle i mean and hey. so far me me and creos have been doing a good job handling that and that's why we're, we felt like okay you know it was it was the right move to to sign sign Tony and Marcus because you know like we're like we're ready to take control, take and, take and, on that task. Yeah, to, you know what I mean. Especially because like not a lot of people our age are doing handling the business side of that. You know what I mean. Like a lot of them are looking more into like you know getting management and stuff like that. You know, but like we we manage ourselves and we try to make sure we understand the business part of it and we know how to talk to to people like with creos creos is creos has 
told me, you know, he can help me how to talk to A&Rs and things like that. You know, he's very professional. He knows a lot about that. And he's teaching me a lot within music. So, so he has nothing but more to teach me. And, you know, the label, we just, we inspired to inspire each other pretty much. And we're just all about helping each other. You know, the label is just simply about helping us help you. And that's just what we want to do. We want to use your platform to help build our platform, but we want our platform to pretty much just yeah, boom. Build, we want to build each other up. Uh, yeah. yeah. And there, like there's, with the contract, the signings, there's no like paperwork involved in it or anything like that because we, me and Creos, we want you to have full control of everything, you know? Yeah. Like we, we're not going to control when you drop things, nothing like that. We don't, we don't have no control of that. Uh, the whole point of us is to help your ideas be bigger ideas and to and just to really show you how to do it, show you how you can do these things, how you can reach out to people, how you can get your music distributed, shit like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are a lot of people doing that like around the world, but there's not a lot of people doing that locally here. So that's why I mean Creos really, really try to do that because we just want the music scene to be bigger around here. And we want people to really understand it and not just understand that it's recording and dropping shit, hoping you blow, hoping the right person hears it. That's sick, dude. That's fucking sick. Um, I don't know. Um, anything else we, um, um, Oh yeah. 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 So exclusive, um, we just built a partnership deal with Tear for Photos, the same videographer who um, shot uh, Big Tony's video for We Do and I. Mm -hmm. So we just built a partnership deal with him. So we're going to be having a lot of content coming from him just because of the, the deal that was established. Um, it's just pretty much off of a, like a loyalty friendship deal. Um, so we would be pretty much getting videos from him. And we're going to get a lot of content done from him. We're probably going to be doing like an introductory video of the label. Mm. Pretty much just like introducing every artist or every person that signed to the label and pretty much explaining what they do, their purpose, whatever. We're actually going to be working on that today. Actually, we're going to be filming that. So it's going to be, it's, it's going to be dope. And on top of that, um, we got nothing, we got Creos. Creos is actually dropping a project um, that's coming soon. He dropped a single off of that and he just did a cover too to one of Drake's songs. So um, that's gonna be dope. And then me, um, I'm going to be having a project come out pretty soon as well. So the whole, pretty much the whole label is gonna be dropping a project, bro. So, you know, it's just when a matter of time. Project? Mm, Cause I, I want, mean, should, uh, I want this uh, Armando <laughs> project, bro. I want the AM. You want to okay, so <coughs> so the project is going right now. Um, I have it containing six tracks, but depending on certain features and vocals, if they come in on time, I will probably have up to nine, maybe eight tracks on the EP. Okay, uh, what 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 day are you shooting for? The day I am shooting for, let's see, we're in May. I say give it a good two to three months. Oh shit, that's been a while. <laughs> I, I say I say three months to be exact. Three months to be exact. Ah, uh, for sure, for sure. I, I, I guess it's not <laughs> no, dropping anytime. It's, gonna be, time it's gonna be dope. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be dope, bro. It's gonna be dope. I'm gonna really try to put a lot of. I'm gonna really try to link with the squad and make sure we put a lot of dope creativity and content into it. Uh, we're gonna try to make the the cover art as meaningful as possible. Um, and the, the track, um, the tracks are going to be filled with nothing but just different vibes from the last project. That's all I can guarantee you. I, different vibes. And each track should have a different vibe. At least it does, it does to me. So, <laughs> but it's going to be dope, bro. Um, we've got a lot of moves coming up though. I'm definitely excited. Um, and like I said, I don't know if you've told your fans or anything like that yet, but our partnership deal, I don't know for everybody who's watching right now, but space station entertainment and messy room records had just established a partnership deal so all of our exclusive content exclusive news everything like that everything that we keep you guys updated on ourselves is going to be going directly 
to this guy right here. So you're going to be able to get the inside scoop of everything, you know, with, you know, who's filming, you know, what songs, who's producing what. You guys get the full info, everybody who's a part of everything. So that way, you know, you guys are able to reach out to our connects as well to help you guys. So, so we're going to have a lot of exclusive shit coming and only Galaxy Boy is going to be getting the exclusive. So y'all better be ready. Hey, brother. No, um, thank you for your energy. Thank you for your stories, your amazing, you know, like your time and just everything that you share with me. It was all, it was awesome to get to know you, bro. You know, you had some, you know, amazing stories to tell. Like, yeah, you had. Yeah, bro, and there's way more. I could tell you way more in person. <laughs> yeah, no, no, dude. Yeah, we'll de- we'll we'll definitely talk off camera. That way you can spill the beans on, on people. <laughs> <laughs> honestly bro but not man it was dope man i really i really enjoyed being a part of it and i i love being able to get the story out um you know i just hope a lot of people you know see what's what's really going on you know i hope a lot of people really see what you're on to with this thing and, and see the positivity coming out of that man because what you're doing is is great man i saw i saw when dre you know Dre gave you your credit for what you're doing, and she's 100% right, bro. As well as anybody else who has given you that credit, they're they're 100% right on that, bro. Because I mean, like you said yourself, Thank you, bro. like Dre said, everybody else said, you know, there's not a lot of people willing to to use their platform to help other people at no cost, and you're willing to do that. You've been on that. You've had that mentality. Same thing with me. I know I could charge you. I'd be like, bro, 150 for a fucking interview, bro. <laughs> I know, bro. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like. No nah, man, but I, I hope this I hope this uh this episode and I hope all of your future episodes and you know the ones you've just put out, I hope all of them really help the viewers uh look at music from a different way to really to really understand that, you know, music is, is something something different from what you would expect it and I hope they, they gain nothing but positivity and I hope everybody who watches this video and continues to watch your videos continue to spread nothing but positivity show love to everybody i mean one share is all it takes you know what i mean it doesn't take that much of your time it doesn't take any money out your wallet you know what i mean i hope everybody you know i hope everybody realizes that and i hope this uh music scene really takes off from here bro because what we're doing is something special and a lot not a lot of people are doing it i can't wait to see i can't wait to oh man it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy bro we're just (laughs) You know, me and your connection, and then me and Dre's connection. Like, I feel like we're building something that's awesome, bro. Like, you guys have your group. I have my group. You know, Dre has her group. And then we're just slowly building um, a community, a, a union, a, you know, just being awesome, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's something that needed to happen, bro, honestly. I mean, I me, mean, the way I look at it, it's just, like, it's crazy. Because, like, me, I grew up, you know, I – I don't want to get too religious with it, but I, you know, I grew up questioning oh, go God a lot. I, I, I grew up questioning God a lot because not, not like, you know, like if he was real or anything, but like just questioning the things, you know, he's done for me, you know, and like why he continues to like forgive and why he continues to bless you no matter, you know, what you've done and stuff like that. And it's crazy because, you know, I grew up questioning that. Then I come across wise, wise is this whole ass Christian now. Um, So it's like, you know, (laughs) I feel like, I feel like uh, he's a different breed of Christian though. That's all I'm saying. He's a different breed, bro. He's he's Mm -hmm. definitely something special. Um, But now coming across wise and coming across fields, I feel like, you know, that, that was really God right there because it's just like, you know, they've impacted me very on like a different level yeah because so. you're co- you're coming off of um you know this this breakup with you and your baby mama you know and then yeah bro and it's just you're like, off of music pretty much and you're like what yeah. Do I do here? yeah man it's just crazy bro just the adversity having to be faced and just like i just hope me overcoming that and you know me going through what i went through with that and just continuing to do this it really does nothing but encourage people to just you know keep going no matter what the hell they go through. Yeah, bro, that inspires a lot of people. Whoever's, you know, like, your, your story's gonna inspire a lot of people, bro. You don't even know it, man. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate that, for real. All right, bro. I'm uh, excited, bro. Yeah, dude. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, bro. I know. I, I noticed your podcast episodes get like better and better each one too. Like each person you interview, like always has like something interesting. It's dope though. Yeah, it's weird, dude. Like I've I've been learning how to interview a little more better. I just honestly, I'll I'll let them talk instead of me talking most of the time. Most of the time, mm-hmm. they've, they've been they've been they've been wanting to fucking get some shit off their chest, you know, you know. But, <laughs> So, it's cool bro it's really cool man I, I love seeing that that's dope man i mean just because of your podcast i've i've come across artists that i didn't even know existed you know what i'm saying so it's just like it's dope i mean you you've impacted me in a positive way no doubt for real thank you brother thank you that's that's all i want man you know that's the thing bro you know i, I get i believe it or not i do get haters i do get people who bring me negative energy and Say I'm um, saying say, 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 saying why are you investing all this money into this? Why are you why are you doing all this? You know and you know you're not you know you might you know it's like one in a million you're getting famous or doing this and that. And I do it for the love, man. I do it because I really I, I've worked my ass off for seven years doing music and I just love it. And I remember my dad telling me, you know, what what do you want to do for the rest of your life? You know, I mean, what do something you want to wake up to? And then music was it. And I. I stay consistent and it's just, I want, I want to help people, you know, and I just, you know, I've, I've seen, I've seen, I know how it feels to get denied by your, you know, your mentor. Yeah. Like that. Mm-hmm. And so I'm always willing. To yeah, help exactly. Everyone. Yeah, bro. Exactly. Like same thing with me, bro. I feel you on that. Cause I mean, like my own, my own mother, um, at one point actually told me she was like, she told me, like, face-to-face, like, you know, how many rappers really make it, you know? And, you know, like, that's something that, like, really, like, fucked me up, bro, because it was just, you like, get that to hear your own mother, you know? Yeah. yeah, you know, to hear your own mother say something like that. And especially because, like, my mom, my mom is always right. You know, mothers are always right. Yeah, it's your mother. Tell you to, mother. Yeah, moms are always right. And you're just thinking, and me, like, I'm thinking, like, fuck, like, I don't have anything else besides music. Like, music is the only thing I'm good at. You know, like, I wasn't good in school academically. I wasn't good, you know, in sports, you know. So, like, music is the only thing that, like, really, like, you know, that I, I know that I'm good at and I know I can do something with. And to hear my mom tell me that, like, you know, it, it just, it broke my heart. Like, you know, it, it put me into, into like a little deep hole, but it's just like, I yep. was like, you know what? I was like, I know my mom doesn't mean it. Like, like you're never going to make it. You know what I mean? Like my mom, like you said, my mom was trying to get me to see the reality of things and stuff like that. You see, you guys but, see it both different ways. Yeah. But I feel like, you know what, maybe God, God made that happen to test me, you know, to Bro, be like, you, you know, you know, you know, what my- so Sorry, my, like, my bad. I have something so dope. Uh, my so I had the same situation, you know, like a loved one, you know, told me, you know, why are you doing this and that? And I talked to my my club, my other close friend, and he's like, you know what? When he's like, you know, they're gonna see it in a certain in a certain way. They're what they're seeing isn't wrong. And the fact that you know the cl- people closest to you can't see what you see, can't see your vision. That's good. That means your vision is just way past what people are seeing, and yeah, yeah. I feel like 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 that like that. Me going through that and experiencing that was just like, yo, like it's it's your time to like you know really really push. You know, like are you gonna? It was really like God questioning, like yo, like are you gonna let this bring you down? Like you know what I mean? So I was just like, I can't like. And that's something that became my motivation with my mom telling me that because my mom has told me that like more more than twice. Yeah. Um, that's that's just something that that made me want to go harder in this music shit just to prove and just to show, you know. And that's exactly because that that's the title of uh, my next project actually. Um, my next project is going to be titled Wrong Motivations, and that's exactly what it's going to be based off of because you know having your mom, you know, having your mom tell you, having to prove your mom wrong, it shouldn't be a motivation. That should not be, that's mo- so it shouldn't sick. be anybody's motivation. Yeah. So it's like, you know, that's kind of, that would still help me come up with the next idea for this project. It's just, I just talk about things that are just wrong motivations, you know, and it's just up to the listeners to really pick up and, you know, see, you know, puzzle it, puzzle it up together and stuff like that, you know? So, um, so yeah, man. So it's just like, that's, that's what I, this next project is going to be based about um, it's just going to be pretty much just based upon, you know, things that motivate you that shouldn't be mo- motivating you, you know? And so 
you know, me going through what I went through with my mom, that that really helped me come up with that idea and the whole concept of this next thing. So it's just like, I'm like, okay, so that is God talking. You know what I mean? I got to keep going, you know? So, so yeah, man, I'm really excited, bro. Um, yeah, I, I, I wasn't even, I wasn't even supposed to be like, I wasn't even ex- experiencing it. I wasn't even like gonna. I got like, tell you I, that. I, I tell you, know you guys, I got the exclusive. <laughs> I, wasn't I know how. I know that, how to pull but... it out. I know how to pull the exclusive. Just, you just gotta touch but, it. <laughs> but, but I mean, but I mean, now that you know you're getting the story, and I'm telling you, you know, the concept behind it, you're like, oh shit, that's dope, because you know how how I dissected it, pretty much, you know. So it's just like, you know, it's gonna be really dope, bro. I'm really trying to put my real life experience into this music and make it just involve everything naturally bro yeah yeah man. so wrong motivations three months from now we'll see maybe let's go, let's go. <laughs> you know keep spamming him spamming bro let's spam these comments <laughs> that we want it we want it sooner <laughs> i feel bad for anybody who doesn't watch this video because they're not going to know what the fuck is coming yeah no no but <laughs> But for everyone watching, I'm gonna have uh, the link for um for his album, his uh, re- uh Welcome to the West album in the comments. I'm gonna have um I'm gonna have a lot of stuff. I probably have even have big. I have a lot of co- uh, stuff in the in the in the description. But you know, but um yeah. I bro. got a quick question for you, real quick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did you you heard the Flatline song? Flatline. The, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. So a lot a lot of people there's just been this little controversy of me biting off of Joyner Lucas's Ross Capri Capriccioni, Capricconi, something like that. Oh yeah, I know which one, yeah. Yeah. What is your take on that? Because honestly, like the way I look at it is like it is similar. It does have its similarities, but it's a whole different story. People can go fuck themselves. (laughs) (laughs) Like it's a whole different story. You know what I mean? And yeah, go ahead. And, they, on they top of, to say. and on top of that, the the storytelling behind it, like the way I, I was storytelling that song, I don't see anybody else being able to storytell like that, dropping songs like that. Yeah. So even if they're saying like, oh, like you sound just like Jordan Lucas, I don't give a fuck. I'll take that as a compliment because that means I'm able to fucking mimic him and I'm able to sound like him. You know what I mean? Like who else is able to do that? I haven't seen nobody else drop a song like that. And say it with high quality too. And just, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just like the being able to to paint a a video, a movie playing in your head off of those words is like That's hard to gotta, do. That's hard to exactly, do as an artist. Exactly. And that's trying to make shit people. rhyme, trying to make shit the, the, the yeah. tell a story. Mm-hmm. So I respect and, it. Because see the, the, that's ignorance talking. That's that's uh, you know, people don't know what, what goes into that. And and people need to respect the influence. You know, there's gonna be influences, and and just let it be. Like, you know, fuck it. You know, it's cra- it's crazy, bro. No, I, um, that's not a problem to me. It doesn't affect me in any way. I really don't give a fuck because, like, how I told you, how I look at it, that's how I look at it. You know what I mean? I'm taking that as a compliment. But no, yeah, I totally understand about that. But I just wanted to know what your opinion was because I know that was a that was a little controversy that was being sparked up around. Yeah, no, no, you're good, dude. You know what would be funny if I was like, nah, bro, you you copied him, bro. You just start some beef right now. <laughs> hey, and on top of that, <laughs> on top of that too, bro. I mean, I wrote Flatline in 2017. Oh wow, that's insane. yeah. So you and me, Flatline, and I know a couple of other songs on there. I wrote, I wrote in 2017. Yeah. No, um, yeah, no, yeah, shit's sick, bro. Man, I tell, I, I was trying, to, I was trying to close it out, but we thought for another twenty more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, bro. No, no, no. I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew it was gonna do that though, because me and you, me and you, we just have that, you know, that energy, that dynamic energy. You know? Like when you called me that one night, and we're on the phone for like almost two hours. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, close to an hour. Yeah, just about. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah, no. But I'm excited, yeah. man. Yeah. No, bro. I really, um, I really appreciate everything. I really appreciate you getting me on this interview, man. It means a lot. I, uh, I feel like I really needed to kind of get the story out there in order for therapy, everybody, and in, in order for everybody to be able to understand my music and what the album's about and the concept behind everything. You know what I mean? 
um, I feel like that's something I really needed to get off my chest. And this was the best way I was able to do it. And I just like how it just fell into place like that. Because I was thinking about just like making like a, a, a video explaining the whole concept of my story and everything like that. But this is the perfect way. And I can't wait for people to, to watch it and to see the whole story behind it. Yes, brother. Oh, my God. Yeah, you gave me, you gave me some good shit, man. Um, so, so what do you call it? I'm gonna I'm gonna end the video right here, bro. But I'm gonna I'm gonna have you still on the Zoom though. That way we can keep oh. chat about this. I mean, just chit chatting. All right, cool. All right, so. All right. We, I hope you guys. You know, if you guys stayed this long throughout the interview, I appreciate that. We we dropped so many gems, so many amazing stories. This guy has fucking his journey is amazing. It's fucking, it's a it's something to be. He hasn't even told me the whole story. <laughs> this is <a> summary. <laughs> But anyway, we're gonna keep continue to talk for another two more hours off off the camera. Um, yeah, thank you, brother, for your time, your energy. Let's close this out, brother. All right, then, bro. I got you. Deuces. All right, we're out of here. Ready, ready. Still got you. It's a beautiful time to be alive right now. Got Big Tom making my recording me right now. Certain. Open up your eyes, time to close the curtains. Got a hot girl, yeah, she keep it burning. All my niggas riding bulletproof suburbans. Uh, I ain't trying to burden the way you.